please welcome Mr. Jim Hunsinger and Mark Reich to kick off the Lean Coaching Summit. Good morning, everyone, and morning. welcome to the 2013 Lean uh, Coaching Summit. We're thrilled to have you here. Um, we got a great crowd, as I could see, and been talking with a few people. They've been coming in and registering, so we're thrilled to be here. Um, I'm Jim Hunsinger from Lean Frontiers, and one thing as we get started here, we just like to do brief introductions of, of our teams that are here with us. So we'll just do that real quick. So I'd like to introduce uh, Dwayne Butcher, my business partner with Lean Frontiers, if you want to stand up. And, and also um, our executive director, Lynn Asbury, is she in here? She may still be out the registration table. There she is. Stand up, thank you. And uh, Amanda Day, our program manager. And I'm not sure if she's in here either. She might be out busy with things. Yeah, and I'm uh, Mark Reich. I'm with the Lean Enterprise Institute, uh, Director of Operations and Strategy. <clears throat> I'll be with you this morning and over the course of the next couple days. I thank you very much for coming and being a part of these next two days. And I look forward to getting a chance to talk with each of you individually if I can. I also want to take an opportunity to introduce uh, some of the Lean Enterprise Institute people that are here. Uh, Rachel Regan, who's responsible for our events. Come on, Rachel, stand up. <laughs> Say hello. Uh, Tabitha Dubois, who's also here, uh, supporting Rachel and responsible for our accounting area. Uh, Kendra Eddy, are you around somewhere? She may be, oh, there she is in the back, just walked in. Thanks for being here, Kendra. Uh, Josh Howell, who is, uh, is he here somewhere? Maybe not. Yeah, there he is. Oh, there he is. Sorry, I can't see you with the lights. <laughs> Thanks for coming, Josh. Josh has just joined us a couple weeks ago. Came from Starbucks. And uh, Lex Schroeder, also, are you in the uh, house, Lex? There she is, she's back there, oh, yeah, You're also <laughs> hidden by the lights. Thanks, Lex. Lex will be uh, uh, leading a session uh, tomorrow afternoon with, uh, for the whole group. So well, we also have one other key member who actually isn't in attendance at this moment. That's John Shook, our CEO for the Lean Enterprise Institute. Some of you may have seen his books or met him before. He'll be uh, joining us tomorrow for the, for the entire day and doing some presentations. So. So keep, these, keep the, the Lean Enterprise Institute people and Lean Frontier people in mind. You see them, you probably saw maybe registration. So if you have any questions, you need help, you can uh, find their smiling faces and, and they can help you out. So anyway, so we'll get moving along here. Um, so just to kind of give you a kind of a, a brief intro, um, what we're here to do. Obviously, we're here to learn. This is, this is about learning. Um, so these next couple days are going to be an awful lot about learning, obviously, from a coaching perspective for the Lean Enterprise. So, so a lot of what we're going to talk about is in the area of learning, and uh, you're going to hear a lot of that and learn a lot about learning today and tomorrow. But how did we get here? Um, well, it started uh, several years ago, um, just conversations John Shook and I had been kind of having on and off about. We noticed uh, in the Lean community, over the last number of years, there's been a lot more talk about culture and how we develop culture. You know, we have the tools and things like that, but we really need to work on the culture a little bit more. And obviously, an important aspect of that is, is coaching, developing people. So there were, we noticed there were lots of things going on, different parts of that that were going on. But our conversation went along, but, but there's, really, there's really no um, uh, gathering of what these different aspects of uh, the developing lean enterprise around coaching and people development going on. So we talked on and off about that, and uh, one day, uh, probably a year and a half, uh, probably a year ago, year and a half ago, I just kind of sketched up one page just to kind of summarize the different things we've been talking about that were going on in the lean, lean community, but has never really been, had never really been consolidated. And uh, last year, 2012, at I think it might have been the Lean Transformation Summit, John and I were talking, and I'd sent him this and just talking about it. And, kind of said, you know, we, we should do something about this. Because we've been talking about is there some things Lean Frontiers and LEI could do together. And John said, yeah, well, why don't we do a summit on that? Oh, and why don't we do that this year yet? And he looked at me and started laughing. He goes, well, Jim, I've never seen you make a face like that, which is true. But I thought it was a great idea, just the timing of it. Not only should we do it, but let's do it now. Um, 
and we did. So last December was the first Lean Coaching Summit. It was a great success, so we wanted to keep the momentum going as actually on the front of the programs. So here we are again this year in July for the second um, Lean Coaching Summit. And like, like Mark said, we are thrilled to have you here. Okay, so I'm gonna speak, we're gonna speak a few minutes, I think, uh, Jim and I, about a couple different things. One is uh, maybe just to get us started, before you look at this slide, if you can pull out your books, I think everybody should have gotten a book. I'm gonna briefly talk about what we're gonna, go, what we're gonna do the next couple days, just real quickly. And we'll probably have a little more detail as we go through the course of the two days. But just to kind of set the stage for what you're going to experience over the course of these next two days. Of course, after Jim and I do this introduction, basically today is uh, kind of your learning. So we've set up uh, multiple full day workshops. You should have uh, kind of signed up for one of those. If, if you haven't, you should let someone know. But you should be registered for one of those workshops. Uh, we'll be going through. Uh, uh, th there'll be instructors, some of the instructors may be in this room, some may, some may be preparing. So uh, Jim will introduce those in a little more detail in a moment. Whereas a networking lunch uh, and a networking dinner this evening, more details of those can be announced later. And then tomorrow, so, so today's really your learning through the workshops. Tomorrow will be, of course you've got breakfast again in the morning. And then we'll be kicking off the day with uh, John Shook and Mike Rother, who are authors of uh, books like Learning to See, uh, as well as uh, Toyota Kata, who ha have a conversation with us in the morning. Uh, we'll then have, we have the privilege this time of having coach Hank Bias uh, with us, who's gonna, he was a successful basketball coach who really learned from Coach Wooden. Uh, also, Be Like Coach's board president, Earl Stalter, is also with us, and they'll be speaking with us in the morning as a keynote. And then uh, we have an opportunity in the morning to, I mentioned just a moment ago, uh, with Lean Enterprise Institute's uh, Lex Schroeder to go through an open space discussion. Any of you that attended this coaching summit at the end of last year uh, would have experienced that for the first time, perhaps. But it's an opportunity to really uh, kind of engage with one another on topics you're interested in talking about. Uh, we'll be a, there'll be a couple hours for that in the morning. Uh, Jim will, will come back and provide uh, uh, keynote presentation as well. Uh, we'll have lunch and then in the afternoon there are uh, various coaching case studies that will be presented. And then at the end of the day uh, there'll be a closing keynote from our CEO John Shook and finally some wrap up with Jim and John. So that's kind of the course of the two days uh, so uh, I hope you enjoy and uh, let's let me uh, transition a little bit to what I've got up on the screen. So you uh, uh, again, I want to thank everyone for coming. I'm not sure how many people have, are familiar with the Lean Enterprise Institute, but let me just give you a brief explanation of who we are. Uh, we're, uh, we were established in 1997 by Dr. James Womack. He's an individual who wrote a book called The Machine That Changed the World, uh, really about the Toyota production system and kind of introduced Lean really to, I think, North America. We're located in Cambridge, Massachusetts. Um, near MIT, actually almost right across the street from MIT, uh, where Dr. Womack formerly taught. And since we've been established, we have uh, had the opportunity and the fortune and the ability to establish kind of 17 institutes around the world. They're all nonprofit, and they're located in places like Asia, uh, uh, South America, Europe, a lot of them are in Europe. And really, so we've created a lean movement that we see kind of as a global movement. Uh, we've also, uh, if you're familiar kind of our, with our products and services, you know, we, we were really originally established to further uh, Jim's mission of sharing this thinking through books. So we publish books. Some of you may have seen our books. We do offer training classes. You may have interacted with us on our website. And of course, we do events like these. I think you maybe if you've seen, if you walked in this morning, we've, uh, in addition to this summit, which we're doing jointly with Lean Frontiers, we've also have our own transformation summit uh, in ne next March. So that's kind of who we are. Um, so kind of as a backdrop with that, really we see kind of our organization, you know, we are a nonprofit research institute, and so it's really our objective, we're kind of a mission-driven organization. It's our objective to make kind of this a co-learning experience. What that means to us is there's an obligation for Lean Enterprise Institute, 
we also feel a little bit that there's, we, we want to share this mission and we want to share the passion. We hope that there's somewhat you, you can feel an obligation. And I think many of you kind of feel that, those that have the passion, to share this learning with others as well. Particularly, I think that's true today and tomorrow. We've got a coaching summit happening. So this is an opportunity for you to learn and coach others, either internal to your organization or external. So this slide is kind of meant to depict that. You know, we feel that there's this one-on-one -on -one engagement with the community that we have. You know, it's our obligation to go back as LEI and share that learning, publish books, you know, develop workshops that can further that learning uh, in the broader community. And then hopefully, you know, you're the practitioners that are, are uh, you know, implementing this stuff in the field. So it's important that we would like to have that opportunity for you to share externally as well. And I think these kind of forums allow you to interact and network, but uh, you know, we, we are always looking for those new type of opportunities going forward. So how does that one-on-one -on -one learning kind of occur? Uh, and I think that's really what we're here to talk about over the course of the next uh, couple days. Uh, I have a strong belief, I spent most of my career with Toyota, about 23 years before coming to LAI a couple years ago. And I think I was, that what is instilled in me is that for that learning to occur, there has to be continuous improvement. That's the fundamental, kind of, kind of the foundation, what we call Kaizen. As we improve our jobs day to day, how do we develop people to be improvers and how do we, how do we uh, uh, further that effort each day? I have a quote from an interesting book here uh, that I wanted to read to you this morning, kind of relates to that. It says, when you improve a little, little each day, eventually big things occur. Not tomorrow, not the next day, but eventually a big gain is made. Don't look for the big, quick improvement. Seek the small improvement one day at a time. That's the only way it happens, and when it happens, it lasts. That's a pretty important book for this conference. It's interesting, that wasn't written by anybody at Toto, it was written by John Wooden. Uh, and so some of you may be familiar with that quote and his beliefs. Um, but I think there's an obligation for both the coach and the team member, and that's what this slide is trying to share. You know, in the, ma in the manager or coach's responsibility is to show respect for the team member. And how do you do that? That's by respecting their intellect, providing challenging assignments, engaging with team members to understand the work deeply, supporting the team member to overcome any struggles they have, an ongoing sustained process to develop that team member's capability, but also develop your own capability to continue to coach. But the team member also bears some responsibility as well. And I think uh, though, though we're talking in the next couple of days about the coach's responsibility, it's important also we have a structure that develop, that team members take ownership for their own development. So how do you define your own career objectives, proactively engage the organization and management with new ideas, take your own initiative, and establish an ongoing sustained process to develop your own capability. So, from my experience, and just my reference in Toyota, really that concept development focused real on three key principles. Again, it sounds uh, like a broken record, but that first one is respect for people. What that means is how to make all work value creating and challenging. You know, we spend a fair portion of our lives at work. We're at work today, even though we're at Hilton, in Hilton Head Island. It's, unfortunately, we're at work. Hopefully some people get some, get some opportunity to enjoy your time here, off work. But how do we, so how do we make that work that the team members and that we do value creating day to day? It's very important for our lives, I think. How do we learn through the act of doing? So that's a little bit of maybe weird English, but really, how do you learn through the work itself? You know, in Toyota, we've referred to as through monozukuri, we get shizukuri. That means we develop people through the work itself. And how do you create a self-development that's driven by a culture of continuous mentoring? And we, that's really, in Toyota, we refer to that as creating that cycle of PDCA learning. So just to kind of dig into that a little more, uh, this is kind of my, an image of what the coaching and development as PDCA is. So plan, do, check, act. I think probably if you're in this world, you've heard of PDCA. But what does it look like in terms of a coaching and mentoring relationship? 
well, how do you define the business need? So why, why is this assignment being given to the team member? What's the indiv and then what's the individual development need and can you align those two? What's your development and coaching plan based on that? How do you assign the work then? How do you go about doing the work? How do you actually go through the act of doing the work and coaching through that work? And then how do you check? What are the, what are the business results that have been achieved? That's very important. I think we learn through actually achievement of the result. And then what was actually learned? And then how do you use the coach and the learner reflect on that experience? So if you can develop that cycle and move that forward continuously, and then how do you, I think a lot of people I noticed are, a lot of you I think are professionals here at the conference in terms of uh, human resources, maybe professionals or uh, coaching or mentoring professionals or continuous improvement leaders. So it's, it's important, of course, to have the structure in place, but how do you also build kind of a standardized structure in your organization to support this effort? And then maybe the last slide, and that's kind of a funny little slide, but the, with, if we kind of can, you know, my premise here is that it's important to develop people through the work itself. So it, if we can agree on that hypothesis, then, and if the premise is that, as I just said, that the coach should provide challenging work, that the learning should be self-developmental, and that the coach, the, uh, sorry, the team member will be coached to find their own answers. So those three things. If those things, three things are true, probably this, the path that the team member is gonna learn on is not gonna be very straight. They're gonna struggle, because we're gonna give them that assignment, and for a while they may stray a little bit. They may struggle on their own. So how do we manage that situation? When do we find the good, a good coaching moment? That's what I'm trying to show there. To coach them along. Allow them to struggle. Think about how far they struggle. And then pull them back in. So from the point of the assignment to the end, to the completion, how can we facilitate their path down that, that uh, uh, towards completion? Particularly with the objective of you know, part of, part of the purpose here is to allow them to learn and allow them to take ownership for their learning. That's probably the most important point. So I guess just a couple questions around this slide and then I'll pass it over to Jim is, you know, whether you agree with this premise or not, we can have that conversation over the next couple days. But uh, what is the value, I would ask, of the struggle? And, and uh, kind of that, that wandering, allowing the, the learner to kind of learn on their own. And how do we ensure the team member has ownership and feels a sense of accomplishment at the end when they, when they get to that completion? And how do you manage that individual learning? Because that's gonna be different person to person, how far they can go astray, how, how, how much challenge they can uh, kind of uh, take on as an individual. So it's gonna be different for each manager or each person. Uh, in Toyota, we had a tool that kind of helped us through that. that was, Maybe you've heard that we, we call, used what was called the A3 as a process to really kind of coach and mentor that person, allow them to find their own way, but also allow, uh, give a structure of oppor structured opportunity to coach them along that way. So uh, I would, rec maybe in closing, I just pass it over to Jim, recommend, this is not, I, I have a 17-year-old teenage daughter that I'm teaching to, to drive right now. It's probably not a good idea to do that for, for that purpose. But for individual development and learning, I think it's good. Let me hand it over to Jim. Thank you, Mark. And uh, yeah, and I'm going to kind of kind of pick up where, where, what uh, Mark said um, in this slide. The path will be not straight, and oh boy, is that ever true. And uh, a number of you have been involved with this for a number of years, so you know that's the case. Um, but uh, so I want to carry, carry that conversation on a, a, a more with what uh, Mark was talking about. So the path isn't straight. Um, how, many, how many of you have uh, read uh, Toyota Kata? So a fair number of you, and, and like Mark said, uh, Mike Rother, and uh, we'll be here tomorrow to get to hear from him, with him and John Shook. But uh, I got this from uh, the Toyota Kata book when it came out, and what I liked about this diagram was it explained something to me about myself that I could never explain before. So my own experience, this is the type of process I went through, but I could have never articulated that to anybody very well until I ran across this diagram. So we have the current condition, 
the, the target condition, and then the, the journey in between, although it is an ongoing journey, the unclear territory is my close. And I thought that was very descriptive, in a sense very descriptive about, I think, what your roles and responsibilities are in your organization. Um, so when you have this situation, you have a target condition where it's not, it's not completely tangible and it's not completely abstract. It's parts of both. So how do we, how do we get to that process? And uh, um, True North, and I'll talk about that a little bit more tomorrow when I, talk, when I talk in more detail about some history and background in this. But as, as Mark said, it's really this plan, do, check, act, this process of uh, going through, and I can say this, you're, we're kind of maybe in this discussion the next couple days talking about the process of the process of teaching people a process for solving problems. And that's kind of your area. So this is the, the process above that on what's kind of the, what you go through in your organizations through this. So you gotta, you gotta get people into this unclear territory. Some of you have probably gone through or are going through this yourselves. So in the course of doing this, trying to resolve all these problems along the way, you are constantly having to go through this cycle. Plan, do, check, act, plan, do, check, act over and over. And there's a variety of things um, to go about that proce process. And you'll learn about some of those today in the workshops, tomorrow in the case studies, and so forth. So, so what does this mean? So as you bring you and your people into this organization, typically they enter into this unclear territory because it's somewhat scared, certainly uneasy, but somewhat scared, uncomfortable in, the, in that. Um, so that's, that's kind of your responsibility. How do we get people to come into this unclear territory and, um, and function and, and hit um, our target conditions? Because they're, they're scared. And um, I bring this up. I, I, I thought this was a great quote from Art Byrne, and for those of you who aren't familiar with who Art Byrne is, he's a former CEO of Wiremold, the Wiremold Company, which is one of the case studies in the book Lean Thinking. And this is what Art experienced. Um, and he just came out with a book about lean leadership. He said, one of the biggest challenges most CEOs, coaches in the case of our group here, anybody that's going through a lean transformation, is that lean requires a leap of faith into the unclear territory, that's a leap of faith. Um, this is a little scary for both of us. In this case, both of us was Art, and at that time, many years ago, uh, his operational manager, George Koenigsegger, who went on to become uh, a lean leader and uh, CEO, former CEO of the Han Company and so forth. So for both of us, because what they were constantly asking us to do, they being the Shinji Jitsu group. So this is a group of Japanese uh, folks who worked, worked within the Toyota supply chain that, were, that have been over here um, teaching um, the methodology process. They were constantly asking us to do things we really questioned. But on the other hand, I think this is key and this relates to what we're doing here, but we wanted to learn. So again, about learning, learn by doing. Everything we did was in the leap of faith. So they were leaping into this unclear territory um, because the, but what if it doesn't work question was always in the back of our mind. And I, again, I'm guessing all of you can relate to this probably from your own journey, probably from the people you're working with because in the role of a coach in your organization, you're working with people probably horizontally to you, people that um, are in positions that uh, report up to you or people that are in your horizontal and also upwards in your organizations as well. So people are in this mode. So we want to get them to is get them at least working in there where they at least will come in, step in, because some of the people scared, they don't even want, they don't even want to get involved with it. But some people reluctantly come in and start working through this. So the first um, step is people are working in this area and they're pr pretty uncomfortable with it. And hopefully over time, as you make some progress, you teach them some of these skills, coach them through learning skills, um, accomplishing tasks, and making improvements, solving problems, they get a little more comfortable because they begin to see, well, the stuff isn't so bad, the world doesn't end when we do it, and actually, gee, we even, at times, we start getting some positive results, which is a good thing. And eventually, they transform into uh, um, a position where they want to be in there. And... Um, that's where they get, they get comfortable. They want to be there because they are seeing, they're beginning to see the results, the tan, you know, some tangible results with what they're doing within the processes wherever they're working in the organization. And two, part of the learn by doing just by default means time. It takes time to get that learning in place. So now they've got some experience they can run with and run with a little more confidence. But ultimately what we want to get 
people in our, you know, ourselves included, and people in organizations at all those different levels, you know, above us, uh, below, and, and at least fun from a functional standpoint, horizontally, we want to get them so they thrive in this unclear territory. And that's really, really kind of an overarching objective, and Mark's going to go through some other objectives as well, is we want to get our organizations so they thrive in that unclear territory. They want to be there. And I bring up another quote from Art again, where he says, the good news is that, for the most part, once a person uh, has been in a real lean environment for any length of time, again, it takes time, that learn by doing process takes time, um, and has proper exposure, so you could say from you guys being the lean coaching group, the lean coaching people, lean coaching community, that again, part of your role is getting them that expo exposure through mentoring, through guiding, through teaching these different skills that they can't make the transition back to a traditional organization. Again, this is what I think is key. It won't make sense to them anymore. Everything will seem backwards and inefficient. So that's what we mean. That's what we mean why we want to get people to where they, they thrive in this environment, where they have these target conditions, and they, you could ask them, well, what is it going to look like? I have no idea exactly, but I'm absolutely confident we'll get there and we'll be in a much better place. And one, one last story I'll tell uh, here before I want to hand it back over to Mark is uh, um, several years ago I was talking with David Meyer. And if you don't know who he is, he's actually a former, former Toyota guy. And he's actually co-authored a couple books with Jeff Liker, uh, the Toyota Way Field Book and Toyota Talent. And uh, he was telling me this story that he was called into this organization, which actually is a grocery store organization, and uh, um, by one of the senior executives. And of course, what he did first is they went to Gimba, which is they went to the grocery store. So they were walking through the grocery store. This guy was kind of telling about some of the problems. And of course, David was asking him a lot of questions. Because um, we talk about the questioning environment. And the guy finally stopped the turn to David and said, you know, by his question, he said, you really don't know much about the grocery business, do you? And David goes, well, no, I'm a manufacturing guy. No, of course I don't. And the guy goes, well, then why on earth would I hire you? And David said, well, ultimately, that's your decision to make, not mine. But he said, I'm not here to solve your problems. I'm here to teach you how to solve your own problems. So the thing I have underneath there is trust in the process. And that's what's critical. You get learn by doing, as Mark talked, talked about this. David's stories, what he's teaching, what he's saying to this fellow is, I'm here to teach you to trust in the process so you have confidence that you'll be able to resolve your own problems is, again, where you want to get your organization to be so that they thrive in this unclear territory. And I'll hand it back over to Mark. OK, I think we're going to, this kind of wraps things up. But uh, so I, maybe to Jim's point, hopefully you guys can try to thrive in some unclear territory in the next couple of days. And so it, I hope everybody, everybody has a pencil and paper. Uh, you can use your notebook, actually. but. If you could, I'd like you to write down these six questions and maybe think about them over the course of the next couple of days. Uh, and you may have some, of course, some other questions that come up in your own mind, but just kind of as general framework questions for what we uh, are gonna be talking about over the next couple of days, uh, let's just, if you could, write down the questions. So what's my responsibility as a coach? Number two, how do I assign the right work? Which goes back to what both Jim and I were talking about. How do I know when to coach people through that work? Number four, what is the value of not giving the answer? And number five, how do I know if someone has learned? And then number six, how do I measure my success as a coach? So uh, hopefully, you know, we, I'd, I'd be happy to have that conversation with you over the course of the next couple of days, but if you could think about those things and uh, reflect on those as you go through your workshops and, and also the presentations tomorrow, and. If, and we'd be happy to take any other key questions you have as well. So I'm going to give it final back to Jim, yeah. and I think we're done. Yeah. So just so now just a couple housekeeping things for you to go through. Um, oh, we'll mention this. So one thing, and actually, actually Mark kind of pointed this out to him this morning. It is a good point. We, we, a couple of years ago, we did a Kaizen to our, our program. You notice up on the front page, there's a hello, my name is. And it's, we always recommend putting your name in there because we constantly had this for a number of years where people would misplace their um, program. And of course, because you're taking notes in it, like Mark asked you to write these things down in the back, th there's value information that people would, do, would have in these. So 
Put your name in this so that way if you misplace it, somebody finds it, we know who, who it's to. Um, so a couple other just housekeeping announcements. One is, just to, just to let you know, in case of emergency, um, exit the building out, out through this door, out through the front glass door, straight out here outside in the lobby area where we're at, and then make your way over to, uh, to the fountain there in, in the front, which is off to the right outside the door. And um, also, too, lunch will, will either be in the oceanfront pavilion, which is, it, was, it shows you on the map inside here where that's at, um, or in this room if weather, for whatever reason, prohibits us from being out near the beach. So just to let you know on that. And we will know, um, we'll let you know about the location um, soon. I guess I, right, right now I guess I should say this, <laughs> carry on. It will be out by the ocean unless something comes up and we'll let you know otherwise. So right now we'll be out by the ocean. I guess I should have said that a lot more succinctly. Um, the break service will be outside of this room near LEI's Resource Center. So right out here when we have breaks, that's where there'll be break service, coffee, drinks, and I think some other uh, things to snack on throughout the day. And oh, okay, also too, um, sign up for networking dinners. They're over by registration. They probably mentioned them to you as you registered. So there's a number of great restaurants um, um, you can choose from to go with the group or go with other people to meet and network. And uh, please make your selections by the end of lunch today so we can, so we can organize around that. And then, um, where's the last one? Oh, okay, so, so finally, um, the, where the workshops will take place. So just to go through this, um, you all should register for a particular workshop when you register for the summit. And just to, just to run, run over them, uh, Managing the Lean is going to be led by Tracy uh, Richardson. And also on here, it lists out the, the room names. If you look also on the map in the front of your program, it shows you where the rooms are. I think there's marquees or something out in front of all the rooms that list what workshop it is. So uh, Managing to Learn is Tracy Richardson in uh, Danner East. Um, coaching Executives is Chris Vogel in Danner West. Uh, coaching skills for lean leaders is Judy Worth in Archer East. Improvement, the improvement coach Karen Martin is uh, in Archer West. And the coaching executive is Joe Murley in the combined rooms, um, Drayton and uh, Hayward. And then also TWI's role in coaching Don DeNero. And all those are just kind of around this direction, generally speaking, um, here in the conference center. And like I said, they're located on your maps as well. So again, on behalf of both of us, we're thrilled to have you here. We're excited about these next two days, all the learning that's going to go on and the conversations and networking. So uh, enjoy it. Let's keep the conversation going. And as the front of the program says, let's keep the journey continuing. Thank you. Enjoy your day.